You're live. And it is five o'clock on this uh, March the 29th, and I will call to order this edition of the uh, Corporate and Community Services Council, uh, Corporate and Community Services Committee meeting of the town of Collingwood, by acknowledging that Collingwood is located on the traditional territory of the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, including the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe peoples, and on lands connected with the Lake Simcoe Nottawasaka Treaty of 1818. This is the home of a diverse range of indigenous peoples whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors to our society. And I'm looking to adopt the agenda for this evening's meeting. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. Uh, moved by Vice Chair Madigan and seconded by Councillor Berman that the content of the Corporate and Community Services Standing Committee agenda for March 29th, 2021 be adopted as presented. And I'll call that question. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Business arising from the previous meeting. Uh, members of the committee, is there business arising from the previous meeting? Seeing none, I'll ask for declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest from the committee this evening? Seeing none, I will move on to the consent agenda. And the uh, consent agenda, I'm looking for a mover and a seconder for our consent agenda. Moved by Councillor Berman, seconded by Mayor Saunderson, that the general consent agenda having been, having been given due consideration by the standing committee be received. And further that the information and opinions provided in the general consent items are those of the author and not verified or approved as being correct. Are there items that we would like to pull for discussion? Mayor Saunderson. Yes, thank you, Chair McLeod. I was just going to pull item 5.1, uh, the Niagara Regional Homeless Mental Health and Addiction uh, letter and the resolution from uh, the Regional Council, I think, and uh, just to say that as uh, our task force embarks on their work, this is clearly a problem that is uh, far-reaching across the province, and uh, so we're not alone in this. Um, and uh, hopefully um, we, we will be able to learn from others uh, as our task force will be able to gather some information from others as we push forward on this. Thank you. Any other comments uh, on uh, item 5.1? All right, and then I'll call the question um, that the uh, two items on the consent agenda be received. All those in favor? And that passes, thank you. Reports and minutes of other committees and boards. And uh, what we're we are looking for a mover and seconder that the minutes of these various committee and boards be received. Moved by Vice Chair Madigan. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Berman and the recommendations carry, carry, contained therein be received. And we're looking at the Accessibility Advisory Committee from February 18th, the Downtown BIA Board of Management, from its regular meeting February 11th, uh, as well as its special meeting held February 25th, its special meeting held March 1st, its regular meeting held March 11th, uh, the Museum Advisory Committee from March 19th, is that a nine? 18th, and the Trails and Active Transportation Committee uh, me meeting from March 11th. Uh, any co comments or questions about those? All those in favor of receiving those minutes? Thank you. Moving on to staff reports, and we have our staff report, uh, the electronic signature policy, and I believe Deputy Clerk Dahl is going to uh, speak to this, or perhaps, oh, no, she has a presentation, didn't she? Thank you. You have the floor, Deputy Chair, or Deputy Clerk. Thank you. Uh, so today I'm introducing the staff report uh, C-2021-06, which is the implementation of an electronic signature policy. Uh, Stephanie, if you can go to the next slide, please. So the purpose of this uh, policy is to improve workflow processes, uh, rec record keeping requirements and enhance customer service by setting a standard and providing guidance uh, with respect to the types of documents for which electronic signatures can be accepted and considered as an official record of the municipality. Next slide. So some of the background over the past year uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it has impacted our traditional business operations here at the town, uh, including but not limited to the following, uh, requiring us to rethink how we do business. Uh, so one of them is processing our application forms, uh, issuing permits for service. Uh, we provide the public 
approval of invoices, minutes and bylaws, resolution sheets, signing of various contracts and agreements. Also our work from home protocols have made it challenging uh, to apply wet signatures uh, to significant documents in a timely manner and the lack of tools available for staff to be able to complete this work electronically. Next slide. The Electronic Commerce Act provides us with the authority uh, for electronic signatures to be accepted by municipalities if the document uh, to be signed meets the requirements established by the municipality. It also provides exceptions in which the electronic signatures cannot be applied and these include such things as uh, wills, trusts, power of attorney documents, negotiable instruments such as checks and promissory notes, uh, documents that are outlined within the Act, as well as documents of title and any document requiring a signature under the Municipal Elections Act. Um, it also uh, upholds the requirements of MFIPA with respect to protection of privacy and access to information and destruction of records. Next slide. So why do we need this policy? Um, it provides us the authority to choose to accept and or sign a document using an electronic signature. It provides a seamless administration, whether working on site or remotely. Our best practice are being established by various uh, businesses and organizations as an outcome of the pandemic to process documents through electronic means, providing efficiencies and reducing process times. And this will allow us to also do our business in this fashion. Uh, provides this ability to apply pro procedures and guidelines to enhance this policy if it's approved and easy access to electronic records, creating efficiencies and retrieval of records and reducing the need for paper records. Next slide. So if the policy is approved, the town will have the authority to electronically sign documents unless otherwise required. So with respect to uh, COVID-19, provide for contactless operations, improve efficiencies in processing applications and improve approval of such documents and agreements. It is also more environmentally friendly, reducing the need to print and deliver the various documents for approval and reduces physical record storage needs uh, within the town. Next slide. So if this policy is approved, our next steps would be education and training of staff and applicable uh, members of council uh, that are required to sign documents. And we also will be examining the use of um, a software system uh, to be able to apply digital, digital signature to enhance our um, electronic signature policy. And that is a pretty simple policy. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, as this is a committee meeting, we'll ask if the public has any uh, questions regarding this report prior to uh, asking council members. Clerk Almas, are there any uh, attendees who might wish to ask a question? Thank you, Chair McLeod. We do have some attendees. If you're wishing to speak to uh, an agenda item, uh, once the public is permitted to speak, please press the raise your hand feature and we will unmute you to address the committee. At this time, Chair McLeod, um, no one wishes to speak to this specific staff report. Thank you. And so there, uh, there are there any questions from members of the committee? Excellent. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy, Clerk, Deputy Clerk Dahl. I think it's, a, it's an interesting, we live in interesting times is the Chinese promise, isn't it? Uh, thank you. So I will ask for a mover and a seconder for this report to be received. Moved by uh, Councillor Berman and seconded by Mayor Saunderson uh, that staff report C-2021-06, implementation of an electronic signature policy be received and that the electronic signature policy attached as Appendix A be hereby approved. And I'll call the question. All those in favor? Thank you. That is, that is uh, passed. Moving on to item uh, 7.2, uh, the fire department specific cost recovery response fees. And I don't believe there is a slide presentation. However, there is uh, some discussion from uh, Chief Parr. I'll hand it over to you, sir. Thank you, Chair McLeod. Uh, yeah, I didn't do a presentation. Uh, I didn't, it was a little easier if I just explained the, the staff report. So in 2017, uh, council asked me to look if there was any ways of uh, recouping costs and cost recovery for fire services. Um, we looked at uh, um, what was done being done in the province, uh, a company by the name of Firemark um, is out there, um, very experienced uh, people with this kind of program. 
Um, we approached them, signed an agreement uh, uh, to enter into the, uh, cost recovery with them. Um, the reason for this uh, uh, report and new bylaws is that I guess the insurance, some insurance companies don't like paying when they don't have to, even though that uh, every insurance policy in Ontario has fire department costs in it. Some could only be 2000 and some are unlimited, which I'll explain in a minute with uh, uh, some numbers for you. So what happened in the a case in Southern Ontario is um, uh, the insurance company paid the homeowner and with no uh, uh, indemnity clause in our fees and services or our bylaw, then there was no way we could collect that money from the home, homeowner. So um, it was just a back way not paying the policy. Um, in uh, uh, last year when fees and services were um, updated, I um, had amendment uh, go in at the end after it when this come out. So we're covered there and then this bylaw will cover off that if it's paid directly to a homeowner, the homeowner has to then pay uh, the fire service or then we can collect through fees and services, i.e. tax on the tax roll. So a little brief history. It's it, it, again, it's not a lot of money we collect out of this when you just for minor calls. And we did we weren't that busy with fires um, since the inception up until last year. Um, last year we had, as we everybody knows, two major fires: one Sporting Life and one Red Hen. Uh, so far for the Sporting Life and the Red Hen fires, and there's still four more claims for Red Hen because there was five different. Um, um, uh, uh, units uh, uh, affected by that fire, but we've collected 45,823. So that fully covers my cost of staff and overtime because of fires and recalls, plus a, a broken equipment. And to this date, we've collected $55,829 through the program uh, so far. So that's about uh, all I can explain of it. And if there's any questions, I'd be feel free to ask, uh, answer them for you. Uh, thank you. We'll go to the public first. And oh, yeah. Is there anybody uh, from the public who would like to uh, have a comment on this uh, particular item? Uh, not at this point, uh, Chair McLeod. Thank you. Uh, members of the committee, uh, comments or questions? I see you, uh, Councillor Madigan. I also saw the mayor prior to, so I'll go to him first, if that's all right. Uh, mayor Saunderson. Yes, and I guess I was out of order since it was in public consult, so thank you. Um, uh, just to say that I remember the debate around the council table uh, when we went, went uh, to get into the fire mark program and uh, it's great to see that it uh, has paid the dividends that it has or the claims that it has to, uh, to cover some of uh, those expenses because they're not insignificant. So glad to see that. Thank you. Vice Chair Madigan. Uh, thank you very much. I, I echo the mayor's uh, comments. I remember sitting around the table listening to the debate. Uh, I just have a question for the chief. So Chief, for clarity for the public, people watching at home and maybe the rest of council at large, if we didn't have Firemark, was there any way for uh, taxpayers, for, for your department to um, cost recovery? Uh, through you, Chair to Councillor Madigan, I, it's, it's, it's so time consuming and cost ineffective to do for us to have a staff member to do it for the amount we're collecting. Um, right now, uh, the administrative assistant here at the department uh, forwards the material on to Firemark and they do all the legwork for us. So um, in the agreement with them, they do get paid for it, but uh, it's far worth the value having them do it than us do it because I don't, I would have to have another staff member. And, and again, as we see 55,000 since 2017 wouldn't cover the cost of that staff member. So I think we get great service for the value that we're getting from Firemark. Any follow-up? Yeah, so that being said, uh, uh, just to go back, it, it's kind of, uh, it looks that we might have had some foresight for the future when we brought this in, and thank you very much to uh, your department uh, and uh, Firemark for helping us uh, recover what may be belittled to some, but uh, it's huge to us. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any question, uh, Councillor? Uh, any other members of the committee uh, have a question? No. I, I just have um, one, and that is, um, is uh, this is really just a dotting of an I and a crossing of a T that some clever lawyer found that we hadn't thought of at the beginning. That's okay. Thank you very much, Chief Parr. And so with that, I'll call the question. I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, moved by Councillor Berman, seconded by Vice Chair Madigan, uh, that uh, FS 2021-01 Fire Department specific cost recovery response fees that staff report FS 2021-01 
uh, be received. And I'll call the question. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 7.3. Oh, sorry, I missed the second half of that motion. I apologize. And that council uh, approve a cost recovery fee by law to provide another avenue to collect fire department incurred expenses in the event that an insurance company pays directly to the policyholder, who in turn does not remit the incurred expenses to the municipality. I apologize, we'll have to call that question again. Uh, all those in favor. Thank you. Okay. Now we move on to the uh, public art update and I will turn to acting executive executive director Culver. Thank you chair. Um, committee members will hopefully recall that uh, throughout the public art process there are updates to council uh, to make things transparent and so council's aware of what's going on. There's two projects referred to in this report. Uh, the first one um, has been on a bit of a long journey um, in the replacement of uh, heading dockside, which was the mural on the side of um, the Shipyard Medical Center uh, on uh, St. Paul Street. And um, at uh, the end of that selection process where the art was uh, effectively commissioned, the, um, uh, the building owner decided to not uh, uh, have art remain on the side of the building. And, and uh, that is obviously their right as any private property owner. Um, so we set on a bit of a pursuit looking for uh, another place where this art could be uh, established. Um, I'm, uh, we have had a lot of swings and misses. Um, currently, we're in the process of a dialogue with a building owner that is hugely optimistic. It's in fact um, been incorporated with the building's architecture as the, as the uh, um, potential location is being renovated. So um, I, I will be able to kind of have more details on that at the next update on this particular project, but we feel much more optimistic that we're going to end up uh, with this uh, particular chosen piece of work, a piece of art um, located on a, a building in Collingwood. And we're very excited about that. Um, the other project that's indicated in the report has to do with the Tremont Square, which is a space between the library and the, the former Tremont Hotel. Um, and uh, the, um, this is really exciting for us because that we've been watching this uh, budget uh, creep along, trying to get to the place where we could finally launch. Um, Council will recall that uh, the uh, Rainbow Club, um, the LGBTQ2 plus, 2S plus uh, group um, uh, made a petition to Council to um, uh, have it reflect uh, inclusion um, and acceptance within our community and uh, and asked to be a part of the ad hoc committee. And so they are. And um, uh, so it's proceeding along really, really well. And within the report, you'll see that there uh, were two, two panels established. One is the ad hoc committee that follows the public art policy. The other is a, a working team, a task force of, of uh, staff that uh, are all designed to help um, provide as much information as possible to the artists so that uh, uh, when a final selection is accomplished, implementation will be a known quantity. So, um, so yeah, really proud of this work and uh, really proud of Tanya Maza who led both of these objectives and uh, um, just wanted to make sure that the committee was aware and subsequently council as well. Thank you, Acting Executive Director Culver. Are there any questions or comments from members of the public regarding this staff report? Clerk Almas? Certainly. And again, by pressing the raise your hand feature, you can speak to the staff report. And there's no interest at this time, Chair McLeod. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of the committee? Mayor Saunderson. Uh, thank you, Chair McLeod. Uh, no questions. Um, just very excited to see this project or both these projects moving forward. And uh, I note that there's 19 uh, pieces of art throughout the community. And I'm, uh, well, I do have a question actually through you to Executive Director Culver. How far back do those, uh, like how long have we been accumulating these arts and these pieces of art in our community? Oh, through you chair. That's a, that's a hard question for me because I've only been here for six years. Um, I do know that heading dockside was at about a 15 year lifespan. So it definitely precedes that. Um, I think busy wagons might be our, our oldest 
I'm not 100% sure about that or the artwork that's on the side of the Eddie Bush. Um, but definitely, if you'd like me to, I, I'm sure Tanya has all those records and I could easily find it. But definitely minimum of 15 years, probably a lot more than that. Well, it's certainly great to see. And, and these will be uh, two nice additions. So looking forward to it. Any other comments or queries from members of the committee? Thank you so much. And so uh, we need a mover and a seconder that uh, council received staff report PRC 2020-2021-01 public art program update for information purposes. Vice Chair Madigan moving and Mayor Saunderson seconding. And I will call the question, all those in favor. Thank you very much. We move on to item 7.4 and that is all, oh, uh, excuse me, uh, CIO Skinner. Thank you, Chair. If I could ask uh, uh, with your um, okay, there's a number of processes that we go through to uh, get community engagement and community input. And uh, in fact, to engage the community and our stakeholders in this type of public art. And I thought that it might make sense just to briefly mention if Executive Director Culver would a couple of the ways that the community is engaged and, and can get these type of things uh, in front of a, a committee like this one or council, because um, we did have some inquiries from the public recently. Thank you, so to you, Chair. Um, I, I, I believe you're, ref are you referring to the public art policy, Sonia? Just making sure that. I, I actually, um, thank you, if it's okay, Chair. Um, <laughs> I was being very broad. I think that members in the community who want to become engaged or propose a certain theme um, if you could mention one or two of the ways that they, they sure. can uh, um, provide input on an ongoing basis or at specific times of the year, that's what I was, was thinking. AED Culver? Uh, for, for sure. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so there are a, a broad range of ways that uh, the community can become involved in and are actually actively sought for engagement. Um, typically, our, our website is a great way to sort of learn what programs are emerging. Um, the engage, uh, specifically the engage page is a great way to see where projects are tracking. Plus it's a, a, a specific vehicle that we use to engage the public. Um, when it comes to the public art process uh, itself, there is a, an ad hoc committee that's uh, generated from the community. So uh, we look for submissions for people interested in joining that. Um, there are obviously as well, and, and I'm sure Clerk Alba could back me up through um, committees, uh, committees of council. There are opportunities for the uh, uh, people to come and speak to any uh, report that's uh, uh, brought to council. Um, it's uh, everything we do is transparent. Everything we do is designed to ensure that the public has an opportunity to be involved. Um, specifically on a number of projects, we'll reach out to uh, the public at large uh, for inputs um, on master plans um, and et cetera. So um, I think the website is probably the easiest and best ways for people to track what's going on and following the Engage website uh, is an easy way to know if something changes and uh, your input is being sought. Thank you. Director Culver, anything else from this committee? Oh, and we've already accepted that. We're moving on to the next one. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we are uh, item 7.4 uh, regarding the rainbow crosswalk. AED Culver. I'm liking that. Uh... <laughs> Sounds a little rapper like. I like it. Um, if uh, uh, so, thank you, Chair. The um, the rainbow crosswalk was actually a another uh, exciting project uh, we're looking forward to as well. And hopefully committee members will remember uh, and the public will remember that this actually did springboard off of, um, this was the original request of council from um, the, uh, the Rainbow Club uh, going back to when um, that interfacing with the, the Tremont Square public art uh, became uh, one of the answers to, uh, to uh, address what they were looking for. Um, but they came back and uh, as we encourage everyone to do, they engaged uh, staff again, uh, following that decision by council uh, and council had an outstanding uh, report asking for staff to come back with options for um, a, uh, a rainbow crosswalk. Uh, so here we are. And uh, the, the proposal is for a crosswalk between uh, the library and 65 Simcoe. So uh, heading uh, south north or north south. Um, across the intersection of uh, Simcoe Street. Um, the uh, design had been um, uh, requested by um, 
uh, the Rainbow Club, but it also has, uh, meets the guidelines. I think the OTM guidelines of uh, that uh, are, are uh, required for crosswalks, and that's been affirmed by the Public Works uh, Department. Um, the uh, approximate cost, the estimated cost, is seventy five hundred dollars to uh, to do the work. The Rainbow Club has already <laughs> started fundraising uh, for three thousand of that amount um, to uh, effectively partner with us on on getting this off the ground. Um, really quickly, a number of options were investigated by staff, uh, including uh, thermoplastics, uh, MMA paint, and others. The MMA paint, um, methyl methacrylate paint, is the um, was the chosen medium for this uh, installation. And the reason for that is that it, is, it can be uh, replaced fairly easy. It's a paint on product uh, versus thermoplastic, which is uh, effectively plastic panels that are cut and fused. So um, this allows us to sort of see how it wears at that location. Uh, we may be back to council at a future time suggesting something else to maintain um, you know, the look of the, the crosswalk. But at this point, it's the most cost-effective way for us to get in and learn. And then we'll, uh, we'll proceed as we go and keep it looking good. Thank you, Director Culver. Any questions from members of the public who are in attendance uh, regarding this issue or this staff report? Clerk Almas? Thank you, Chair McLeod. It does not look like anybody wishes to address um, this staff report. Thank you. So uh, questions uh, from the members of the committee. Mayor Saunderson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, a comment. Uh, this has been uh, a while in the in the asking, and so it's exciting to see this thing move forward. I did receive a comment uh, this morning uh, about a concerned resident who thought maybe it was an exclusive uh, uh, arrangement, and uh, and I just want to be clear that it's not, and uh, that this is very much about inclusion. Uh, it's something that our community has been working on, both through the diversity. Uh, collective, but also with our partnership with the uh, UN about uh, safe and inclusive uh, communities. And, uh, and I think this is an important step forward. So uh, I'm very much in support of this. Thank you. Uh, and seeing no other questions or comments from the committee, I, I have one. Uh, and I just, I'd like to hear, I think it needs to be um, stated in public, uh, Director Culver. How is it that that seven strikes across a sidewalk costs seven thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, that I've painted entire houses for less than that. Can, yeah. <laughs> can you explain a little bit just to get that out there in the public, please? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. The, the effectively, it's it's a very specific paint. It's obviously designed for high wear. It has to be able to withstand things like snow plows scraping back and forth over it. Um, so it's it has to do with the material that is used plus the labor to install it. We expect it to take, uh, we're gonna try and allocate up to two days for the curing time because it really is important that it becomes solid. Uh, so it's a little different than uh, what you might get for the walls of your house. Um, <laughs> maybe some significantly different than what you get for the walls of your house. Uh, we also broadcast uh, some grid into it to make sure that it's slip resistant and things like that. So it's, it's, it's more than, it's more sophisticated than, than paint we might put on drywall. I think that's hopefully a good enough answer. Yes, it is. Thank you. Councillor Berman. Thank you, Chair McLeod. Just, uh, I wasn't gonna just speak to it, but uh, I sent an email to Sonia and Dean and, uh, Peggy, um, that uh, we, uh, my family went up to Thunder Bay for a week this summer, and the day we got there was actually headline news because Thunder Bay had spent $28,000 on a rainbow crossing, and my brother took us by because it was in the headlines, and it looked like something that some kids with sidewalk chalk had given up halfway through. And it was $28,000. So I was thrilled at the price and the quality of what they'd done here. Sent it to them just as a, as a reference on doing a job right the first time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. And so I'll call the, uh, I'll look for a mover and a seconder for uh, PRC 2020-02 Rainbow Crosswalk that staff report uh, PRC 2021-02 Rainbow Crosswalk be received and that council approve the implementation of a rainbow crosswalk at the intersection of St. Marie and Simcoe Streets moved by Vice Chair Madigan and I need a seconder uh, Mayor Saunderson and I'll call the question all those in favor. And that passes unanimously. Departmental updates. 
we do, do we have any today? I think we do not. Uh, oh, uh, CAO Skinner, we do. Yes. Thank you, Chair McLeod. Uh, I was actually uh, waving on behalf of Executive Director Culver, who I was hoping would provide a thorough update on some of the upcoming things that will be happening related to our parks and expected summer crowds. Right. Uh, yeah, so thank you to you, Chair. The, um, uh, it mentioned in the SIC, but I think it, it, it uh, bears repeating that um, staff have been working very hard through the winter months to update a very, very old uh, parks bylaw. Um, it, it, to say that it's been somewhat reinvented, I think, is a bit of an understatement um, for current times. And also having to carefully um, address all of the issues that arose, uh, caused a lot of public concern uh, last year along our waterfront. Um, so uh, the parks bylaw right now has been gone through several revisions at the staff level. It's sitting with senior management now, uh, expected to uh, receive some feedback there. And then the next step after that, we'll be heading to uh, the engage portal I mentioned earlier regarding public engagement. Um, where the public will have the opportunity to comment on the, the bylaw to, to, uh, to provide their, uh, their final feedback into um, that, that piece of legislation. And uh, from there, uh, we'll take that feedback, um, see where it can help to improve the bylaw, and then uh, we'll present to council. And, and right now, the target is May 3rd. Uh, we'll uh, work to, um, that'll be for the committee meeting and then the, the subsequent council meeting is May 17th and understanding that this brings us very close to uh, the May 2-4 weekend we uh, um, will do everything we can to make sure that we're ready to implement immediately following the the passing of uh, the bylaw should council wish to do that um, there's already a lot of work in place right now and uh, even some procurement uh, that is being uh, pursued subject to um, council's approval of the bylaw finally um, I'll also mention too that uh, concurrent with that uh, the bylaw department is working on a parking, uh, uh, a parking, a paid parking proposal. Um, actually, a, a revision of the parking bylaw, but it includes some paid parking opportunities within it uh, that council will get to see, I, I believe, uh, very soon, and uh, and that'll also kind of tie to everything together in terms of a revised plan of attack for how we manage uh, parks this summer. Thank you, AED Culver, I appreciate that. Uh, and thank you for the suggestion, CAO Skinner. Um, I was going to bring up um, this during other business, but since we are sort of doing some departmental updates, uh, perhaps I will uh, direct my question to, um, my question for Fire Chief uh, Parr now, rather than in 10 minutes or in a few minutes. Um, and I was wondering where we stood since we're talking about think getting ready for summer and uh, May 2-4 weekend already being discussed. Um, what is the plan regarding um, fire permits this year? Because I know last year we sort of just um, allowed the 2019 fire permits in backyards to continue throughout 2020 and now uh, it is 2021. Uh, what's, um, what's the plan, please? To you, Chair. Um, yeah, th th as of January 1st, we instituted an agreement between, uh, or we talked about it at department heads and then decided to go forward back to the uh, normal uh, ways. So $35 for a permit and you required it as January 1st. And it's good to the, uh, to the end of 31st, no matter when you buy it in uh, 2021. Um, so it, it has to be a site visit here. I'm really crossing my fingers. I hope by maybe the 1st of May, we might be live with a um, online permit uh, a solution uh, and working hard at it as, as part of uh, one of the operational plans with in conjunction with a couple other departments. So hopefully we can, I can come back in the next uh, uh, committee meeting and maybe update that. But right now they're, they're available here at the fire stations. Thank you, Chief Parr. And as a follow-up question, if I'm if I want to have a fire tomorrow, I have to march thirty-five dollars cash to the fire department, or am I tapping? Uh, no, it's thirty-five dollars cash. Sorry, we don't have a tap. Yeah. We're not that modern here. No, it yeah. wasn't feasible to have a, a just for fire permits to have a, a bank uh, machine a debit yeah. machine here. So that's why. Just want to make sure, and you yeah. can be sure to you will see me uh, tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, 
uh, to uh, item nine, which is public delegations. And uh, this is when we open up the floor uh, to anyone who would like to have some things to say to this committee and, uh, and I'll turn to the clerk. Certainly, thank you, Chair McLeod. This is to our public that are watching. You're allowed five minutes to speak to the committee regarding something within their mandate. If you request to speak, please press the raise your hand feature and we will unmute you. There's no one requesting to speak at this time, Chair McLeod. Thank you so much, which takes us to uh, item 10, which is other business. Is there any other business? Vice Chair Madigan, that was quick. Uh, thank you very much, Chair McLeod. I appreciate the time. Uh, you got my question away to the chief before I could. Uh, Councillor Berman and I always joke that we receive, you know, you speak with one person and you can say I've had a number of people ask me because one is a number. Um, but I've actually had 32 people, 32 individual people within the last week um, reach out to me through Facebook because we went to public school together asking about the, uh, the fire permits. So thank you so much for asking that. But while we have the chief on the hot seat, uh, we've got a new uh, truck coming, sir. Can you uh, can you let the community know that uh, when it's coming? Uh, through you, uh, Chair. Yeah, pretty exciting. We uh, COVID delayed it a little. Um, I still believe we're getting a very well made product. It's coming from uh, uh, New Brunswick, Ontario. So that's uh, or New Brunswick, Ontario, New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, 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 but uh, very excited. Um, as of tomorrow afternoon, the deputy chief and myself do a, a first time ever a Zoom virtual inspection on the truck before it arrives in Brantford. So it will be shipped out this week. Um, uh, again, it was very exciting news when council approved it in 19. We're finally getting it now under budget. And basically, I would say on time because of COVID restrictions out there in, in uh, the plant operating in a safe manner. That uh, plant we bought never had one lost minute of time because of COVID, because of the measures they put in place. So, yeah, um, very excited and uh, trying to get the smile on my face because something else is coming off that list that uh, has um, got passed that uh, CEO uh, Skinner had done with our operational plan. I, I've got the uh, fire mark per, uh, uh, permit off the um, this. I've, uh, we went out with uh, Sarah's crew, who is awesome. Her, all her staff with procurement were able to uh, uh, go out for our SCBA also, and we'll be awarding that soon. So it, it's been really well done, and I appreciate all the help by all municipal departments. Uh, follow up, Vice Chair Madigan. Yeah, thank you very much. I just want to make mention and have everybody understand that uh, something that went through government processes came in under budget. Correct, Chief? Through you, to Chair. Yeah, that's two things. I think you'll be very pro, uh, pleased with when you see the procurement for our SCBA also came in under what I uh, uh, thought it was. So thank God for the American dollar drop great right when they had to tender. So, yeah. so the last follow up. Um, so the vehicle that that will be replacing, what will what will happen with that? Uh, through you, uh, Chair McLeod. Uh, the vehicle that we we're placing, we already sold. That's we had that other good news story with this that we we got uh, double the money being offered at tender because we found a, a fire department in the above Kenora uh, wanted that vehicle. So the company that we uh, uh, procured uh, this uh, our new pumper from, uh, they uh, arranged a deal for us, um, passed the savings on to us, and that helped with the procurement of this, and that's kept us under budget. So. All right, and uh, Mayor Saunderson, oh boy, boys in their fire trucks. <clears throat> this isn't about a truck, this is even more exciting. Uh, and this goes back to last year, we had a boat uh, purchased and uh, I don't know if it was in the water last year because the, the, the formal launch got delayed, I think because of COVID, I'm just wondering what the launch plans, launch plans are this year, not launch pad, and uh, um, when we can all come down and uh, spray water on it or something, or christening. <laughs> Uh, through you, uh, uh, Chair McLeod, yeah, uh, we, we did have it in the water last year and in service and actually we were called for service 17 times from the time we launched it last year to assist. Um, we're planning on putting it in the water probably after um, Easter weekend uh, or maybe Easter weekend. We just have to be careful with the, the bilge pump freezing and uh, what um, stuff on the boat. Um, we've worked out a deal with um, Parks, Rec and Culture that they have a spot for us for this year for it. 
Um, and then we'll look for a little better weather and hopefully that the gatherings, uh, we'll see how it goes with the COVID restrictions to do an official launching. So again, remembering the, the uh, couple from uh, Collingwood, the specs that uh, uh, donated uh, uh, some money towards that boat to make it uh, uh, for me to be able to ask council for the extra money. So <laughs> a lot easier. So hopefully we'll, we'll sometime in May, but we'll make sure it's a beautiful uh, day that everybody can come and enjoy. Great Any follow up, uh, Mayor Saunderson? Nope, that's just great news. And uh, you're full of great news today. So hopefully there won't be a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the committee? Other than, and so now we know the reason for the particular kind of grin that uh, Chief Parr has today. Uh, and that concludes other business, I believe, which brings us to item number 11, which is our adjournment. Who will that uh, be moving the adjournment? Why it is Vice Chair Madigan. And I will call the question on adjournment at uh, 5.41 PM. All those in favor? And we are adjourned. Thank you for your kind attention.